is safe to say that Dungeons and Dragons is no longer just Dungeons and Dragons, since Wizards of the Coast made a new incursion into the world of board games with Castle Ravenloft a couple of years ago, just about, and succeed, uh, deservedly so. Uh, some more games have been coming out that are pretty interesting. And these, my friends, Lords of Waterdeep, is the latest release from Wizards of the Coast. I have not opened the box, I have not played the game, and therefore this review is only about the contents of the game. Uh, what's inside the box? Is it worth it? Um, is the quality justifying the price tag that this game is asking for? The first thing that caught my eye when I received the game was the size of the box. It's nothing like the size of the box of Castle Ravenloft or Battle for Nora or anything at all like that. It's, it's actually quite quite an interesting size, a beautiful cover as well. And the whole thing feels nice and quality, which is, to be perfectly honest, what I would be expecting from a game from Wizards of the Coast, because it's the kind of precedent that they set uh, with the Castle Ravenloft series. But without further ado, let's take a look inside and see what, what comes in this game. My reaction, by the way, is totally genuine. I really have no idea uh, what's inside the box. Right. The box is laminated. Matte lamination, which is very nice. And you can probably see the difference now uh, in the camera from the light reflection that we had earlier and, and how nice and matte and beautiful and colourful it looks now, which is great because the box is quite durable that way. The cardboard is a little bit flimsy, it's not as thick as I would be expecting, but it should do. Uh, the fact that they have covered the reams of, of the box uh, should add a little bit of durability, which is fine by me. The first thing we see is the board, and it promises to be huge. Let's open this, and it is actually rather big, <laughs> it is very nice. Uh, beautiful cartography, very simple style, there is no uh, gimmicks to it. Um, I like it actually, I, I really do, everything, the, the palette is quite subdued which means that the cards, which I'm expecting, will have quite stunning illustrations, are going to really shine on top of the board. So from that point of view, it, it feels very, very nice. Uh, some of the landmarks have been highlighted by making them bigger, uh, completely out of proportion to the rest of the buildings. But the one thing that I get from this map is a massive sense of scale, this is a huge city. Waterdeep is massive. I seriously cannot fault this board. The material is thick enough. It's not particularly well laminated compared to the box, and it's a pity, but I can live with that. It, it, this should be okay. Um, so far, the impression is actually very good. The rules manual, I'm expecting it to be very well laid. And so far, I am not being disappointed. There is space for everything, absolutely everything, which is lovely. The board is clearly described, so are the knights and the meeples. The tokens, the player mats. By the looks of it, it's a fairly complex game as well. The, the rule manual is quite meaty. But everything is referenced, everything is illustrated, and uh, somehow it doesn't put me off. Very nice indeed. I think actually this, this is going to be a fairly easy rules manual to reference, which 
my bet is that you are going to need, at least at the very beginning, this section here, the appendix with the agents, it's gorgeous. This is very nice. Absolutely beautiful. Very well done. Something that maybe they didn't need to do in this way, they could have done in, in a much more succinct way. And, and, and they've gone out there and said, hey, here's the artwork. Look at how lovely these things are. And they're absolutely right. The illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. Clarifications are glossary. Well done. Well done. That is something that we don't see often enough. And then you get actually, hey, top, top notch. The storage diagram. This is fantastic. It doesn't just tell you that there is a storage inside the box, but it also tells you how to store things so it will fit properly inside the box. That's excellent. That is really in detail. Well, well done, Wizards of the Coast. Absolutely brilliant. Of course, we get the compulsory and understandable advertising. And then we go on to the tokens. We got a fair bit of token in here. Three boards. Let's take a look at one. The tokens are thick enough, which is very good. But before I go into detail about them, I'm just going to lay them so we can take a proper look. Then we have more coin tokens. Money tokens. And the gems. Let's take a look at them. As you can see, the three couple of interesting things, first of all. And these are the, I believe, coin tokens that you use. I'm really pleased that they have used a different shape from the standard round coin, uh, which is excellent. The detail, the illustration is absolutely gorgeous. And the gems, although very typical, but they leave no doubt in the game what they are meant to do, what they are meant to be. And that can only be a good thing because it stops from being distracted finding out what's going on around you and what is exactly that you're dealing with from the moment go. Another interesting thing is that the tokens are double-sided. So if you take a look at the building behind, we can see a different arrangement. In this case, we have the Fetlock Court. I don't know what it is. Uh, in my hand, I have the Zor Star, uh, which gives instructions as to what you can or cannot do. Choose a space containing an opponent's knight. You use that space action as though you have assigned a knight to it. Okay. Um, I'm sure that will make perfect sense once I've read the rules. For now, it doesn't a lot, but then that's to be expected. Now, we have uh, three of these boards, and the components of the game don't end there, which is absolutely brilliant. There's plenty more to see, I'm, I'm very happy to say. These are the player mats. These I'm finding a little bit disappointing. The color is gorgeous, the illustrations are really beautiful. One per player, the, the game is for two to five players. I'm finding disappointing though, the flimsiness of it all. They are relatively thickish cardboard. They should last, but it's a shame that they haven't gone into the tiny little, well, tiny, the extra effort of actually making this a little bit more rigid, more in tune with the token material, or with the board material. That would have provided with a massive, massive durability to the game, which I expect um, it's going to need, because I can imagine this game being a keeper uh, for the time being. It's a shame. Again, it's not a deal breaker. You will probably won't feel the change that much, but it would have been very, very nice. Maybe an expansion with it would be very welcome. Tons of tokens, uh, and I hope you're getting a very good view of the arrangements inside. This is glorious. Absolutely glorious. 
very very nice thing to see now very quickly I'm not gonna talk too much about this because these are what they are they're just wooden cubes which are almost ubiquitous in every single board game that has been created for, for the last few years nothing wrong with them just little cubes which is absolutely fine and they go there we also get some meatballs made of the same material by the looks of it and you get quite a few meeples although i believe they call them knights i'm sure they are and we get them in black green blue red and yellow five colors five players there for now and same thing with this do we need to open them probably not and very very thick pack of cards which i am very interested in finding out what they look like because they should have beautiful illustrations and i'm, I'm a sucker for this sort of thing the card in the cards is not great it's very thin and although they have been laminated and i hope the camera can take on the lamination to make them more resistant to liquid and handling in general quite frankly they are a little bit more than just laminated paper which is a shame yes the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous no doubt whatsoever the arrangement of the cards is lovely you should be able to look at the cards whether you're left-handed or right-handed not a problem there at all All in all, they feel okay. It's a shame, it's a, it's a real pity that they have saved money on this, because obviously they are going to be used in the game quite a lot. And this is by far the weakest component. I don't understand it, but I'm sure that Wizards of the Coast have their reasons to do this. Overall, the game is very solid. I don't consider the cards issue to be a deal breaker. It's just, just a shame. It's just it detracts from the overall quality of the whole thing, and it didn't need to. It didn't need to at all. I would have been more than happy to pay another extra five dollars to actually get thicker cards for this. As it stands, I will have to be very careful. The 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 box is lovely. That blister where to tidy everything up is fantastic. The, the board is great and the whole game looks beautiful. It looks really inviting and really makes you want to play it. It, it captures some, some of that D&D &D somethingness that makes you want to play. So I am very keen to dive in and see what it plays like. As it stands, I would probably give it a three and a half stars because of that cards and because of the player mats. Sort those two inches out and you definitely have a five-star production game here, without the shadow of a doubt. Would I buy it again, knowing what I know? Yes, without a question, because this kind of thing should not stop you from enjoying a game or from getting it for your collection. But it's something that you have to indeed keep in mind, especially if you're going to be playing with, with young children. So, hope you like the game. I'm quite sure I'm going to do my best to like it very much.